and sit down. Welcome to this week's installment of Sports Weekly. I'm Brennan Miller. And I'm Taylor Merritt. We've got a good show for you today from Ithaca College Sports to the intramural scene. We've got that and much more. Sports Weekly starts right now. Number 14, Ithaca College football took on Liberty League rival St. John Fisher Saturday at Butterfield Stadium. The Bombers came into the matchup undefeated and looking to break into the national top 10. Let's head to Butterfield for the highlights. We start off with a Joe Germanario pass. That's going to be complete to Will Gladney, and he's going to find his way to the end zone. A 57-yard touchdown. Bombers up 7-0. Now, a double reverse here. What a beautiful play by the Bombers. You're going to watch Germanario get out there. Lead block. Michael Anderson going to be able to take this one 35 yards. An Ithaca touchdown. 14-0 Bombers. Bombers able to tack on a little bit more here as Germanario goes deep to Gladney, 30 yards, 21-3 Bombers. Now, this one going to go deep. Gladney able to make the catch on the free play, and the Bombers lead still increasing 28-3. Fisher not out of this one yet. A 67-yard pass. Will Blake able to break a few tackles and outrun the Ithaca defense. A good effort by Michael Romes there at the end, but Card touchdown Cardinals, 28 10. Isaiah DeHaiti gets this one. He's going to have some open space and beat the Fisher defense to the end zone. 35-10 Bombers. And then Nicholas Bahamandi bangs in a 47-yard field goal to put the Bombers on top. 38-13, second longest field goal in Ithaca College history. Cardinals coming back, though. This one's going to be a Hunter Walsh 14-yard touchdown run to make it 38-20. And then Hunter Walsh is able to find his top receiver, Tyshawn Sizer, down the far sideline, and Sizer takes it 90 yards for the touchdown. Demir Pro is going to get into the end zone here. That's going to make it 38-5, to the lead for the Bombers. Cut down to just three, but the game going to end on a long pass. They're intercepted by Kyrie Brown. That ices the game. The Bombers take down St. John Fisher, 38 -5. To 35, but not a bad day from Hunter Walsh. He had 480 yards, two touchdowns. For Joe Germanario, an even better day. 380 yards, four TDs. He did throw two interceptions, but they didn't come back to haunt the Bombers. And Will Gladney, 136 yards, three touchdowns for him in the first half. He had three receptions for three touchdowns. But the Bombers looking very good and able to hold on for the victory. So German area continues his, continues his hit run with the Bombers, throwing for four more TDs. Gladney also continues to impress, climb up the ranks in Bombers history. Ithaca will hit the road next to take on St. Lawrence in another Liberty League matchup. Coronel Big Red Football had a home matchup against a rival of theirs. Coronel Big Red versus the Colgate Raiders. Coronel scored with a field goal by Garrett Patla to put them up 3-0. to zero. Colgate's first drive was ended with an interception by Michael Irons. To, the Big Red could not capitalize as they were forced to punt, giving the ball back to Colgate. <coughs> Cornell's Justin bettered sacks Grant Benneman for a seven-yard loss, setting up a third and 17, and eventually the Raiders had to punt, keeping the score 3-0 for the first quarter. After a series of punts, Colgate gets, the ball, gets on the scoreboard for the 10-yard touchdown pass from Brenneman to Nick Gill. The extra point was good. Cornell trying to answer, but after a shuttle pass, Delonte Harrell loses the ball, and it's recovered by Colgate's Jacob Esarco. Colgate's defense causing its second turnover of the day. Colgate uh, ball with the ball back increases the lead. One yard rushing touchdown by Malik Twyman. The field goal all the way there. But Cornell answers back with a fumble, running the ball down for 87 yards. Cornell defense causes a three and out. The Big Red take the lead with a touchdown pass to SK Howard for five yards. Score now 17-14. Colgate answers right back with a one-yard rush from Alex Matthews to take the lead back 21-17. Big Red field goal now 21-20. Throws on a fourth and third situation and turnover and down, and that does end the game. Colgate wins their first game of the season. 
for now one and seven, Cornell one and four. Both quarterbacks had one touchdown and were very similar with their passing yards. Uh, Kenny with 268 for Cornell and Brenneman for Colgate with 224. The 61st annual Cortica Jug being played at MetLife Stadium this season will make history on November 16th with an expected attendance of over 45,000, a Division III football record. Our own Matt Price went out to get reactions and thoughts from the Ithaca College community. In about two weeks, the 61st annual Cortica Jug, which is the historic football game between Ithaca College and SUNY Cortland, will take place at the NFL's MetLife Stadium the home of the New York Giants and the New York Jets. Owen Boucher, a senior at IC, is already gearing up for what promises to be a great experience for him and his friends. There's about 25 of us in an Airbnb in Jersey City. It's been really cool to connect the alumni and the students that go here already. It's been really fun. Brett Mayerson, also a senior, explains how this year's contest will make him feel close to home. It's another opportunity to go home and go to my favorite stadium in sports and just go there and see my favorite college. So it's just, I was so excited. While excitement is brewing for the 61st annual Cortica Jug, there are still students, especially upperclassmen, who are hesitant and frustrated with the game taking place in the Meadowlands. You wouldn't have something that's like a, like a Boston event in like New York City. Some juniors and seniors understand that they will have only one overall Cortica Jug played in Ithaca. Why would I want to go anywhere else in the team? Whether it's a theater, arts, or sports, like everything that's involved in Ithaca should be in Ithaca. According to the Ithaca Athletics Department, nearly 40,000 people are expected to attend the contest on November 16th. The new experience is always interesting and fun. Um, hopefully this can be a tradition that lives on if it, if it all goes well. In Ithaca, Matt Price, Sports Weekly. Cortica will be viewable on ICTV.org or on Ithaca College's WICB FM radio station. Before we head to break, our reporter Severin Lavenstein tells you what to look ahead to on the program, and John Kearney will have some news on volleyball when we come back. If you follow Ithaca College soccer, then you've probably heard about their star goalkeeper. Just how well do you really know Max Lichtenstein? Coming up on Sports Weekly, I'll tell you everything you don't already know about his story as so we take an in-depth look at the man in net. Stick around. After a heartbreaking loss on last year's Elite Eight, Ithaca's women's volleyball team is right back on the road to the championship. Find out more after the break. Welcome back, Sports Weekly. I'm Taylor Merritt. And I'm Nick Niles. Ithaca men's soccer has been on a tear these last seven games with a record of 6-0-1 and, and are looking to extend their unbeaten streak. Ithaca men's soccer hosting St. Lawrence University for a mid-season Liberty League matchup. Early action, Ithaca's Thomas Pierce would rip a shot towards the far post but miss it wide right, giving the Saints a goal kick. Later in the first half, Tom Dillman's corner kick would get to Colin Schuss for the header goal, giving Ithaca a 1-0 lead. Schuss' second goal of the season and Dillman's third assist of the year. Not long after, St. Lawrence tries to respond as they take the ball down the field. Bombers keeper Max Lichtenstein comes out of the box, but the ball is stolen and shot by Lawrence's Marvin Sabanda, but it's saved by an Ithacan defender. The first half ends and the Bombers are still up 1-0. Late in the second half, the Saints dribbling the ball down the field and a slide tackle gets a free kick for St. Lawrence shortly after St. Lawrence's Rafael Zocolaro plays the ball to Michael McDougald for the game-tying goal and his third of the season. Another Ithaca corner kick from Dillman gets the ball into the box, but after a series of headers, one header hits the crossbar. Ithaca's Jonathan Kiriakidis rebounds and the, hits the ball into the back of the net to give Ithaca the lead back now 2-1. to one. The Bombers would hold off the Saints for the rest of the game. Ithaca still unbeaten in Liberty League play after this close matchup. Goalkeeper is a position that requires technical skill and natural ability. But for the Ithaca College men's soccer team, they have a netminder who brings more than just a high level of play to the table. R7 Lavenstein has more. 
The Ithaca College soccer teams are full of elite talent, but perhaps none have been talked about as much as Max Lichtenstein, the men's D1 transfer goalkeeper, now in his senior year. Teams we've noticed this year, coming off of last year, haven't played balls in the air into the box as much anymore because, frankly, they know how dominant he is, and if balls come into the air, um, into the box, he usually deals with them really well. D3 soccer in itself is actually pretty sloppy. It's a lot of kick and run and you know, stuff like that, and the fact that you know, our, our center backs and defenders are comfortable with playing back to him and you play it in the air, he'll, he'll take it down. He's got, he's got great distribution overall and then he catches everything in the air. We often say he's a, he's a big Atlanta Falcons fan and we call him Julio Jones. It's true. Max Lichtenstein is a terrific goalkeeper. He has all the skills and attributes you could ever ask for. But there's more to the man than just the way he can stop a speeding soccer ball. I like to be a leader and not a leader that people resent, a leader that people look up to. Um, so whether it's off the field or on the field, I like to be a role model for the guys that are 18, 19 years old while I'm 22. I'm a pretty reserved person, but when it comes to on the field, people can see my true colors, which is pretty loud and outgoing. I'm a big family person. I have an older sister and my two parents back in Florida, so I try to talk to them every day because when I talk to them, I just feel a lot more energized and positive about the day. No matter the game, no matter the situation, Max's teammates know that they have someone behind them that they can rely on. In Ithaca, New York, I'm Severin Lavenstein, Sports Week. So far this season, Max is on the in the top five of three out of the four Liberty League's major categories. In other, other news, Ithaca College's volleyball team has been, on point, has been a point of pride for the school in recent years, winning a conference title in the three of the last four years. This year, they look to continue their stellar run and capture the team's first national championship. With more on what creates the winning atmosphere, here's our John Kearney. Ithaca College's women's volleyball team has a winning attitude, a coach with nearly three and a half times the amount of wins than losses, and a recent Elite Eight run under their belt. After a brutal loss in the Elite Eight and the graduation of five seniors, the women did not miss a beat, incorporating underclassmen into the fold seamlessly. Coming in as a first year, they really made it clear that, you know, they had really high expectations for us and that they, they did a really amazing job of just making sure that we knew all the ins and outs of like just the little things and everything. So going into the season, we really wanted to create a strong presence on the court as a team. And because we're from across the nation, we really worked hard at coming together as a family because that's what our program works really hard to do. Um, so in order to do that, we focused a lot on bringing the freshmen first years up to uh, all of our principles and our values and educating them on what we think is the bomber way. Coach Johan Dilfer had this to say about his team's continued success. If you want to be successful, this, um, this is going to sound really cliche, but how much are you willing to sacrifice for your teammates? To the IC volleyball team, success is nothing new. Ithaca has captured eight conference championships, six in the Empire Eight Conference, and two consecutive Liberty League titles. With Dilfer at the helm and this team's combination of talent and metal, the bombers are back on title line. In Ithaca, for Sports Weekly, I'm John Kearney. When we come back from break, we discuss two of the biggest coaching changes in Bombers history and what to expect. That and much more coming up in Sports Weekly. Welcome back to Sports Weekly. I'm Nick Niles. And I'm Brennan Miller. Ithaca College baseball and softball are about to go through some major changes with the retirement of two legendary coaches. Baseball head coach George Balasente and softball head coach Deb Pelosi leave Ithaca with extensive and highly regarded resumes. Balasente coached for the Bombers for 41 seasons with a career record of 1,136 wins, 507 losses, and eight ties with two Division III championships. The legendary coach oversaw IC to 38 seasons with 20 or more victories. He's also a member of the College Baseball Hall of Fame class of 2005 and an Ithaca College Hall of Famer. Deb Pelosi, who had coached the Bombers since 1989, amassed a 886-win, 412-loss, two and two-tie record with the Bombers and helped bring one national title to South Hill. Pelosi had only one losing season during her tenure at Ithaca College. She was also inducted into the, into the 2011 Hall of Fame and is also a member of Ithaca College Hall of Fame. With the departure of two Hall of Famers comes some new faces. For baseball, the program stays in the family as Ithaca hired David Valicente, the son of George Valicente. For softball, one of the more decorated softball players in Ithaca College history returned to be the head coach. 
Chalette Quintana, after six seasons at Skidmore College, will return to the South Hill and the Ithaca College softball program. David Valicenti was the first baseball coach in Wells history and helped build the program up over his first three seasons there. He had a 43-63 record at Wells and led the Express to its first appearance in the NEAC NEAC Conference Championship. For Quintana, after a Hall of Fame career at IC and a brief stint as an assistant coach, she returns to her alma mater to try to lead the program to another winning season and a deep tournament run. So now, with the new coaches, the question must be asked, what are the expectations for each team? Well, you know, I think when you take a look at the team, or both teams, especially the softball team, they have not had a losing season in, I believe, 38 mm -hmm. years. So I think high expectations there, but at the same time, I don't think that you can have those kind of expectations for a first-year coach, even though she was underneath uh, the original coach. Definitely, definitely. And I think it's also really important to mention on the baseball side of things that whether this passing the legacy on to the son is actually a good move if the name carries over uh, in terms of like career success. And for baseball as well, it's going to be their first season in the Liberty League. They're jumping over from the Empire 8, so it'll be interesting to see because baseball has been such a dominant force in the Empire 8, whether or not they're going to be able to continue that in, into Liberty League play as well. Oh, yes. And in terms of for softball, uh, for the new coach, uh, Hannah Shellett, Quintana. She was a former player, obviously a member of the Hall of Fame herself for her time at uh, IC. How do you think she'll like measure up to fill the shoes for Deb? You know, big shoes to fill. Big shoes to mm -hmm. fill for sure, but I don't think that she'll have too big of an issue. She obviously knows the system. Uh, she knows how the game is played or how it was played under Deb, and I think she'll, she'll be able to continue it on uh, you know, into the future. Before the break, we have John Kluger with a sneak peek of what is to come. Welcome back to Sports Weekly. I'm Brennan Miller. And I'm Taylor Merritt. A sport that is less known by the majority of people on campus is making its way up. John Kluger has more. At Ithaca College, intramural sports are a big part of students' lives. Some of the most popular sports being basketball and football leave the other ones behind. This year, handball has risen in popularity among some of the upperclassmen. I put handball in... Uh phys ed in high school, but first time playing about five years, so. Eight teams this year are participating in intramural handball. One group that sticks out in particular is a team of seniors trying to win the handball championship for the last year of college. Most students playing intramural handball this year are unfamiliar with the sport. For the upperclassmen team, they're lucky. Their team captain, John Kearney, has years of experience and provides insight on how to win the championship for handball. This being our first year playing together, uh, we're all seniors. It's been really awesome to get that experience with some of my good friends. Um, I think we have a lot of chemistry, having hung out around each other, kind of developed a rapport uh, that's really going to take us to the next level, hopefully take home the chip. In Ithaca, for Sports Weekly, I'm John Kluger. Definitely a sport that could be on the rise. Thanks, John. Now with a look at a high school scene, Ithaca Red football lost in crushing fashion, losing to Horseheads 41-6. Ithaca boys soccer came out on top 1-0 against Oneonta in a hard-fought battle. Ithaca volleyball won against OFA in three straight sets 3-0. Ithaca girls soccer mirrored the boys team winning 1-0 against Horseheads. And finally, the Ithaca cross-country team came in first in the stat cross-country meet winning with 42 points. All stats for Ithaca high school provided by Max Preps. Time for our Ithaca College Athletes of the Week. We start with the star quarterback, Joe Germanario of football, who went off against the University of Rochester with five touchdowns, 332 yards, and another win under his belt. Next is field hockey's Kristen Rafferty, who scored one of the two goals in the win over Rochester to secure the second seed in the Liberty League tournament. Finally, the lone volleyball senior, Caitlin Floyd, who for the ninth time this season surpassed 40-plus assists in a match in the win over RIT. We are going to send it to break one more time, but be sure to stick around. Me and Taylor will be right back. Time ticking down in the show. It's time for the two-minute drill. 
Ithaca women's soccer lost in a close one against number 22 RIT 2 to 1. They moved to 9, 6 and 1 and 3 and 2 over their last 5 games. Ithaca men's soccer lost in overtime to RIT as well. They kept it tied 1-1 through the first overtime falling in overtime number 2. They fall to 11-4 and 2 going 1-3 and 1 in their last 5 games. Ithaca wrestling begins their season today at 3:30 with the Ithaca College Invitational. The wrestling team went 11 and 4 last season making it to the NCAA tournament finishing in 4th. Number 7 Ithaca football looks to secure the Liberty League title with a win over number 25 Union on Saturday. Both Ithaca and Union are undefeated and whoever wins will secure an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Number 3 Cornell women's hockey will look to continue their hot start as they will take on Quinnipiac University at Lina Rink. They are 2 and 0 last sweeping Robert Morris in a two game series to start the season. Cornell men's hockey start their season on the road as they will take on Michigan State University. The men's team finished 21-11-4, making it to the NCAA East Regional, losing to Providence last season. Cornell football will host Princeton University in an Ivy League matchup on Friday. Princeton leads the series 62-37, last beating Cornell 66-0 last year. Cornell is 2-4 on the season. Ithaca girls varsity soccer will take on Elmira at Veterans Memorial Stadium at 5 p.m. They are 7-5-2 on the season as playoffs approach. So we've got a little bit of time left in our two-minute drill. Tyler, I think we're just too good. We're too quick. We are too quick. And, you know, you know I think giving us 30 seconds is really, uh, it's really a goal and record here. Yeah, no, I, I really think, you know, if we were this Ithaca offense running that two-minute drill, Ooh. because they've got a tough matchup against Union this Saturday, so they might need to do that, I think that we would have just scored. I think we would have just won the Liberty League. I think we will win the Liberty <laughs> League. <laughs> uh, just, it'll be a tough matchup, and that game will just be insanely close, in my opinion. I agree. A good matchup between two teams that are undefeated on the year. And with that, this is the end of our show for Taylor Merritt. I'm Brendan Miller. We're saying thanks for watching. From all of us here at Sports Weekly, we hope you enjoyed, and we will see you next week.